Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to be showing you how I store and organise my stamps and dies. This is a highly requested video. I get asked this every single day, whether it be in comments, via email, messages. I always get asked this question. Now I did touch on this when I shared a video that showed you how I stored my A4 magazine stamps. So the way I store them is how, how I basically store everything. I'll link that one up here because that's Again, if you're someone that collects a lot of those A4 ones from the Creative Stamping Magazine, which I know you do, some of you may you already do it that way, but do check that out because it's for me it's a bit more of a compact way to store those because I've got quite a few. Um, so I this this is how I store everything. So I'm going to talk you through this. I've been using this system now for about two years or so. I did show you everything in my craft room tour video, which again is about two years ago. I'll share that up here because you can see it in a bit more detail. But I'm just bringing some of the tubs into you know onto my desk here so you can see them. So this is one of my stamps. So I've got five of these tubs. Oh, okay. I'll share some pictures at the end and I'll. I'll um, I'll put them on Facebook, but I'll share them in the video at the end somewhere. So I've got these ones here. Now, I did pick these up in China, so a lot of this has come back when I shipped my um, all of my craft stuff. <laughs> there was a lot, but I had these tubs. Now, the reason I love these tubs so much is because they are completely square. So you can see here, they're the same width at the bottom as they are at the top. A lot of things you find in the shops are larger at the top, and then they go narrow, and they're no good for when we want to fit you know stamps and dies and stuff so I will try and find something similar but I'm sure you know you can pick these things up in I would well actually these here I think I picked up in the range these are slightly different they've got a handle so these were in the UK the reason I love the ones with the handle is I can just literally pull this um, and just kind of it's this is very heavy I've only got two of these and these are all my dies so I think some of you think I have a lot more, but <laughs> this is it. Because when you actually take all the packaging off, I know I share a lot of things in my What Did I Get videos, but once you take everything away, all you're left with, you know, is, is a piece of metal and it's very thin. So yeah, just two of these for my dies and then a few more of these for my stamps because they are a bit more bulky. Now I have a mix of two pockets so the older pockets I used to use are the ones that I purchased when I was living in China so they are I'll show you this one here so they are just straight at the top and I purchased these from a shop called Muji which is in the UK as well I think it's worldwide actually it's a Japanese store and they've got a really nice stationery department but it's just flat at the top so there's no kind of finger piece so let me just take out the white there there we go so that's how they are and they've been working brilliantly. I've still got them now. There's nothing wrong with them at all. It was what was at hand for me when I was living abroad. So they've, you know, they've done the job and they're still, you know, you can see they're being used perfectly. But since moving back, my mum actually got me onto the newer ones. And I'll go through all my titles as well, all my dividers, because like the categories, because a few people have asked like how I categorise them. So I'll show you the titles that work well for me. But um, the ones then my mum uses, and these are stronger, are these ones here. Okay, so I'm still sorting a few bits out. These are my newest Christmas stamps. So I need to, I like to put a piece of white paper behind. I can just see everything a little bit better. So I do put up just a plain piece of copy paper, just cut it in half, and that will fit into each of these pockets. So I will link these pockets below. You can buy them in different quantities. I always usually go for the 100. It just works out cheaper. I think it's about 6 99 for 100, and they're from eBay. I will see if I can find any equivalents on Amazon as well, because they seem to be the two kind of places that most of us will buy these kind of things. But for the for the amount you get, these are the ones that I've seen to be, you know, good value for money. And like I said, they're nice and thick and they have the finger piece here. So it is easy to pull out, you know, if you've got something taller like the bigger plastic stamps or the actual magnetic sheets. So that's how I do that. I've still got a label bits and pieces as well. And I will show you my labeler in a moment. So if I just bring this up to the side, this is just one of them. So here I've got fashion. I've got new home, I've got animals, I've got cartoons, and then I've got Christmas. So Christmas is quite big. I want to sort it out a bit because there's a few in there that I don't really go for anymore. So I will donate those. And yeah, these are just ones that have kind of evolved as I get more bits and pieces. So the fashion is quite a new one. And that's kind of come from me getting those lovely, let me show you the stamps that I got from Craft Stash, which was the Fashionista, which was a big A4 one. And I, I cut that down and re kind of stuck them so it's double-sided 
you know, it's all about handbags and perfume and stuff like that. So I thought, okay, that's that's very, you know, fashion orientated. And then I had with that, I've got this one here, which was free from one of the card making magazines and it's the girls and you change all the clothing. So I thought, okay, they sit well together. And I've got this one here, which is very old. This is a CDs, hats off to you. And it's got hat boxes. So yeah, things kind of evolve as I get more and more stamps. I've got a hunky dory one there, which I need to label which was the shop till you drop. Okay, so I will show you the other tubs in a moment. And then new home, again, that's kind of newish because I've received the Daisy May lovely houses. I've got the welcome cottage. I've got some big stamps of houses. I've got that one there for the lover stamps, which is the, you know, decorating your new home. So that's where I go with that. And then animals, so obviously self-explanatory, anything with animals in, mainly dogs and cats. And then cartoons are, like the critters so I guess more well it is just cartoon images so I know that's an animal but it's more of a cartoon for me so I this makes sense to me obviously we've all got our own ways of doing things I need to take some out of this because it is a little bit too kind of wedged and then for example there like that's the Wallace and Gromit that came free with the magazine that's a cartoon and then I've got spot the dog again that's a cartoon so yeah, cartoons and animals, there's, a, there's kind of a fine line, but for to me, in my head, it makes sense for me. Okay, so that's how I stamp them. I'm going to give you the measurements and show you the laminator, all that stuff I'm going to do in a minute. And then this is, like I said, one of my die ones. And this one here, so I've got circle dies, square dies, oval dies, rectangle dies. Then I go into words, numbers, border and edge dies, flowers, flowers, flowers and nature, then I've got butterflies and then I've got topper dies. So topper dies for me are just those big plates. So anything that you would die cut. So this is the big happy birthday and that would almost be the card done kind of thing. So they are, yeah, exactly that. I've got that lovely big one there, the X cut one. I haven't used that for a while actually. I should bring that one back out. But I do have still quite a few to label. That was another nice one. I've got a clarity heart there. X cut heart, so just those big plates really, the things that kind of do it for you. I mean the heart could go into like Valentine's maybe, but for me when I think of toppers I know that's in there, so that's where I kind of go for that. Um, doilies, I've got a big spellbinders one there. So like I said, that's one of those, I'll show you the other one in a moment. So what we do first of all, because I am in the middle of organising some more kind of categories, so I thought it would be good to do this video, so I'm just going to put this to one side. Okay, so I have brought a new laminator. There was nothing wrong with my other laminator, but it was a two pin and I'm in the UK and we have a completely different plug socket system and everything. And I was just worried that with something that has a lot of heat to it, having the different voltage, I just wasn't comfortable with. So I have invested in another one. This was just as inexpensive. I paid $23.99 from Amazon for this one, the Royal Sovereign. It's got really good reviews and it is a really nice machine. It's also all digital and you have a bit more control with the thickness of the laminating pouches that you put through it. So it's very easy. It, there is a little bit of a sound to it because it has a fan in it to keep everything obviously nice and cool. So I'm just going to turn it on. Okay, so you can hear it starting up there. Now you can change your thickness. You just hit that and you've got, bring up here. So let's go back to the beginning. So that's, hang on. So that's cold. Okay, then you've got 75. I find that's the best to have it on. This is such a powerful machine for my simple laminating. 75 microns is perfect. On your laminating pouches, it will say what they are. I generally buy 150 micron laminating pouches and they're what I'm using today, but they work perfectly with the 75 setting. Okay, and then you've got 100, 125, 150, 175, 200 and 250. And then it goes back to cold. So I'm going to keep it on 75. You can also reverse as well if you want to go back over it and then that's just your power on and off. Okay, so we're going to leave that on. When it's ready, this will, it does a little beep I think and then that stays green. Then what I've done is I just cut down copy paper to six by ten and a half. That's the size that I like for the, the kind of the, the tubs that I'm using. So if your tub is thicker, you might have a seven inch tub, then you'd want to have your your width thicker and your pouches might not be if you're not going to go for the same ones I have yours might be smaller therefore you wouldn't need yours to be so tall so you see what I mean here 
So these are what we're going to make, these little dividers, and they poke out by about an inch and a half so I can see all of my titles. So that's why these are all ten and a half inches high and six in width. So just look at what's going to work best for you know the tubs that you have. But this is just, you know, like I said, lots of you have asked. You've, you've all got different setups, so hopefully you'll pick up something from what I'm doing. So I've already done three. I need ten more because I've got a whole new tub of categories. Now I've got lots of laminating pouches. I recently brought these here. I got a hundred from Amazon. So again, I will share that link and they're all here. And these are 150 micron. Then with this, I got these here. I got this one, which is 20 pouches of 150 micron. And then I also got some others, but I think I use them for testing. And you also get your cleaning papers. So you just roll that through with nothing on it. It's like a glossy um, piece of thick card and it will just, I guess, clean up anything that might be on there. So I'm just gonna use these ones here. Now, yes, there is a waste. I cut away this kind of plastic here because obviously I can't go I can't get two out of this because this is only eight and a quarter um, A4 width so it's just not it wouldn't benefit me being a divider so I'm just opening up each of my pockets um, like so and then just grab one of these and pop it in there pop it more to one side I mean the acetate I say acetate once it's obviously melted it is like an acetate so some of these pieces I will keep with my other acetate and it, it will be enough for a little window on a card. So I will recycle some of this as well. So let's pop those to one side. So you can see now my light has stayed green. And then I will pop the rest of those in there in a moment. But now it is pretty quick as well with this one. So just pop it in and then that will just do its thing. And I'll just load up some more pockets. Okay, so now I've got a nice laminated piece. So I'm gonna cut around this and then I will be using my labeler to get all those categories done. Now, the one that I had before was the Bonsai and it is still on my Amazon storefront and I'd still recommend it. There was nothing wrong with that machine. Like I said, the only reason I've changed is because I just felt a bit more safer having the, the correct watt or wattage in my plug. So I'm gonna carry on now and get the rest of these laminated and then I'll come back and show you how I do my labeling. Okay, so I've laminated them all. I'm now just cutting them down. And all of these pieces here also are great for my pop-up box cards. You know, I like to use the acetate on, on, on a lot of the pop-up kind of features. And because it's a little bit softer, it's, you know, it's gonna work great. You can always do some nice bows and things like that. So that just all goes into my kind of acetate folder that I have. And I can reuse most of that again. So I'm just trimming it so that it's about an eighth of an inch border. Okay, you get a really good seal, and plus it's only copy paper, so you um, you should get your your join your seal really almost literally on the paper. So I think that's everything there. Okay, so now on to labelling. So this is my other tub, and I've just put pieces of scrap paper in to act as dividers for the minute until I got around to doing this. So I am going to be doing food and drink because I have. I just pull out some of these here. So I've got the pizza, I've got this one here, which is the fast food fun, which I did do a video for, but I lost all the footage, so I will share the card. I've got Rosie Studio ice cream there. I've got some wine from a magazine. I've got birthday cake. I have even a little one there, which is a trim craft one, which I need to do again, labeling on the front. I've got ultra new coffee love. So yeah, I had quite a few then. I thought, right, let's do food and drink. So. Now I've got two here, this one's actually my mum's, I thought this is battery operated, but they both use the same, I guess these are, what would you call this, it's a tape cassette, this is what's got your, your sticker reel on. So these will work in both of these machines, they're the 12mm and this one here is my one that I purchased in China from Brother, so it's all legit, there's, no, <laughs> there's nothing fake, there's nothing dodgy about it, um, but this one does have an adapter so I've just changed my lead, so now I've got the, the correct watt for this one, so I didn't need to replace that. It was quite funny though that I had to label my labeler, so I went onto the Brother website and I had to just work out what all my Chinese symbols meant, but I do love this, I know how to use this even 
really without seeing that you kind of get used to kind of like a pattern but these are the same ones here the 12 mil you know these ones are white so that is basically a white sticker with black ink this one is black on white you can get yellow red greens you can have white on black so it's the other way around so do look at that because you don't want to order obviously the wrong one but um you can see how they look there in the picture as well so it's exactly the same so yeah the brother one is very good that's battery operated there is no mains with that one let me just double check no it's all just batteries and it's very easy you just take that out and pop it back in again there's they're, they're not difficult to use um to work at all and then to use them there's really clear instructions and brother are really good online anyway so I'm going to stick with my one here. Okay, so I've just turned mine on. Now when I know I'm going to be typing and printing a lot of labels, I would just do it all in kind of one go. So I don't have big gaps because there are tricks and other ways around it, but the one that I find the easiest is just to continue typing and just leave a space and then cut it. If you just do one label at a time, you'll get a good inch of wastage either side. So yeah, it's just a bit easier to do it this way. And I think um, Jennifer Maguire, she has a tutorial on the Brother labeler. So again, take a, take a look at that because she gives you lots of hints and tips. So, so I want to do food and drinks. So I'm just going to type food and I'll do the symbol for the and actually. So I'm not really going to be teaching this because I've got the Chinese one, so there's no point. Um, okay, just find the and sign. It's right at the end, there we go. So food and drink. Okay, then you could do print, which will then, and then it will come up saying, are you sure? And then you do print again, and it will come out. But like I said, there will be an inch either side. So I'm just gonna carry on now and do a space and go into my next one. So my next one is gonna be, what have I got here? Travel, I think it was. Yeah, travel, because I've got stamps of stamps. <laughs> so like on an envelope, I've got places like Big Ben and the Empire State Building and things like that. So I thought if I do that under travel, I've got suitcases, those kind of things. So just travel, okay, and then space again. And then I've got another one here, which is, um, yeah, see I've got a lot of sea themed stamps because usually I would just, before I had them kind of mixed in with, I think it was, scenes I had but now I thought actually I've got that many that they can afford to have their own little category so I'm just going to have under the sea or do I want to see through no I'm going to do under the sea um under the now it will only allow you to have so much because it will only print off so much in one go but it's got here 204 millimeters I'm not sure how long it is but it will tell you so don't worry so okay and then space what other one have I got here oh children should I have children or kids? No, I'm going to do it children. Children. And then that'll cover everything. Okay. Space. And then... Oh, I've got like planning. So yeah, I'm just going to put planning. Because I've got like the days of the month and... Like lines and boxes and things like that. So just check us about that, right? Okay, space. And then the other one here is oh, yeah, I've got whimsical because I've got things like princesses, unicorns, I've got fairies. I mean, I've got the beautiful babushkas, which is for the love of stamps, but I'm going to put that under whimsical because I probably wouldn't find it otherwise. And I've got garden as well. So let's do whimsical. Whimsical, I've done that right, yep, and then, okay, space, what did I say the last one was, oh yeah, garden, which is a mix, it's kind of got a little bit of food in it, it's got the vegetable patch one that I had, but it's also got that lovely garden one from the magazine that I recently had, and I've got the stamps from the secret garden, so, and there's a few others to go in there as well, so whimsical and then garden. So I keep them very short, just to the point. I don't, you know, I don't need to have loads of it because I go into more detail on the stamps themselves. So, okay, so now I'm gonna print. That's basically now just saying to me, are you sure? So I'm gonna print again, and now it will come out the back here. So you see there at the start, there's that kind of like an inch. That's just wasted. Whereas now, now you can make them smaller, but I don't, <laughs> just go straight into it. So I know I could probably save even more, but this is just the way that I do it. But now all I'm gonna do is just cut them between the words. So that's everything there. So then you just push that 
and it cuts it off. And this is so handy. This is, I use this in the kitchen. I labeled like my cereal things because I had them in plastic tubs, um, you know, spices and things like that. So yeah, don't just think that they're just for the craft room because you can use them all over the house. So now I'm just going to, but see what I mean? So I have, if I hadn't, if, if I'd done each one separate, I'd have that inch and inch here either side of garden. So it would end up being like this long and you just have so much wastage. Whereas at least if you do it this way, you've you've managed to still print all them off and just lose those two pieces. But I'm sure there probably is even a way to not have that. But like I said, I'm, I'm fine with it. So now I'm just gonna cut these down. So I've got garden. Okay, so they're all done. So now on the backs of them, you basically just fold it in half and the sticker comes up on one side. So you just peel the sticker off like this and then just peel it off the other side so if you want to stick you know the top down first and then the rest you can but I just take it all off because it's only a little bit that I'm sticking down now the good thing is is that these are you can keep forever and these peel off quite easily they will stay on but you can peel them off nice and easily now you can make these with pattern paper if you wanted to and I used to have them like that which you would see in my craft room tour but the reason I've changed it is because I found it to be a little bit too busy so as lovely as it looks quite pretty I was just I don't know I just found it easier to have them just plain so that's just my choice but you know, by all means, you do this how you want. This is just the way that I'm doing it. And then I just stick it to the top left, and that's it. So now I can pop in food and drinks right at the back. So that's going to go in there. I'll take that out because that was from my scrap drawer. And what was the very back one there? I forgot to. Oh, weddings. Ah, missed that one. So I have to do wedding in a minute. So then I've got travel. So I'm just going to stick all these on here and. Um, replace those pieces of cardstock that I had. Okay, so now I'll just pop it on its side, you can see everything there. So they stick out just enough for me to be able to quickly go and then I can look into it further. So there I've then got Creative Stamping, the Enchantment Collection, April 2017. So I will then, you know, do the same labeling, but just do it on each of my stamps in more detail. So, I mean, you don't have to do that. The reason I mainly do it is because I'm sharing tutorials with you guys. And when you ask where things are from, especially if they're a little bit older, you can still find a lot of things, whether it be on eBay or someone else is selling it. So for me, if I have everything listed, it just makes it easy. But you can also just keep the, you know, the, the, the actual part of the packaging in the piece as well. But I will take those probably out. So... But I put white paper in everything. So there's a few that I need to, and I've done pretty much all of my like my dividers. I now need to just sort out some of the stamps themselves. So there's a lot of my creative stamping ones there and in here. Like when I have little stamps, things like this. So these are all those tiny ones that you get from Dovecraft. So I get a piece of acetate, A4 acetate, cut it in half. So I then have, you know, a A5 piece. And then I just stick them because they come on their acetate piece with the picture and I just stick them on there so they, you can see all the separate pieces and then just pop them all together. So they are mixed and that's why I've just got their mixed Dovecraft stamps. So I might have a miscellaneous section which I can obviously go to because that for me would go under hobbies because I do have one for hobbies. So I think as it grows a bit more and maybe I get some more smaller ones that I've got hobbies then that can be added to it and so on. So that's just kind of how I've done it for me it, it's worked the best way I mean years ago I used to have them in folders and they just would always the plastic would end up ripping I used to have them in little oh uh, what do you call them the zip kind of things but I would forget about them I need to be able to see everything so for me this is just to the right hand side I'll share a picture of how I have them and it is literally I can just you know kind of twist my chair and I can just flick through and it just for me visually to be able to have them like this is the best way I know I see lots of people have them on magnetic great big walls they have a wall full of magnetic sheets that's another good way because you can see it but I like to know like what the collection is from and if I just sometimes I see that and for me I think I would panic that I would get things mixed up and I I don't know things would just yeah just get a bit lost for me so this this works well so that I need to sort out the front let me just show you 
So this is another one here. So this is sentiments, which is huge. So I have a lot of sentiment stamps. So this one is near the front because this is the one that I kind of go to the most because I pretty much have a sentiment on everything that I make. Then behind that, I have alphabet and numbers and then I've got love. But what I would do is move these around because love will sit perfectly with wedding. So I'll, I will have those closer together. Um, and things like the garden... What else have I got here? No, like, oh, let's have a look. There are going to be more, so that's those ones. Let me grab the other one. So then there's this one here. So here I have spring and Easter. I've got patterns and backgrounds. This one is, oh, have I forgot that one? Oh, look, I've got, this is baby. Ah, see, because I had children. I said that would cover all, so I forgot that one. So what I might do is, well, I'll have one. I'll keep the children and keep the baby one I guess so I look at that and then here's another big one which is flowers and nature so this is all of these here so yeah and also if something comes with a die what I find is I keep the die with my stamps in with all of my stamps so for example here I have the Daisy May peony bloom and that comes with a die now the reason I keep the dies with the stamps is because if that die was separate with my dies I wouldn't use that without the stamp the stamp is the first thing you're going to use and then the die. So it's best to keep the dies with the stamps with all your other stamps. I personally feel, I think for me, it definitely seems right. And I, I use them because I think if I didn't have, if I went to get the stamp first, I know I know my collection. So I know that this has a die with it anyway, but you may well forget and you end up fussy cutting it or something. And then later on think, oh my gosh, I had the die for that. And I totally forgot. So I keep them together on the back. So that's that one, and I've got I've got quite a few like that actually. So I'm going to pull out some more. Like I said, I am still sorting this, and then I am slowly going to start having some of my brands together. So for example, here well, there's some of the stamping up. But I've got a lot of woodware, and I would rather I think have them all together because sometimes they work well together as well. So that's another thing that you can do. You might just have a lot of maybe like lawn fawn for example and like yeah lawn fawn are my favorite things they're quite similar in their kind of stamping they do a lot of the critters lots of animals and creatures and things like that but it might be nice to have lawn fawn together and then categorize that down to you know if they're travel related or if there's food and drink in them and under the sea and that kind of thing so there are lots of ways but for me this is the one that works the best i've got another one as well but i can't fit it that was the one i showed you with the fashion new homes it's four that i've got sorry not five and then two of the die ones so we'll move on to the dies now and i'll show you how i do that and the magnetic sheets that i use okay so here are all my dies so i talked you through the categories for that one but on this one here i've got birthday dies animals whimsical dies shapes buildings and objects so when i've got shapes that's like because i hear i've got my squares ovals rectangles and circles they're my the most common but the shaped ones are things like a triangle hexagon just more obscure cloud shape just things like that that yeah i don't really go to as much so that's why i've got them like that then i've got buildings and objects so in that one i have because I've got obviously objects, but it's kind of a little bit travel as well, I guess. But yeah, so I've got these ones here. And then I've got these buildings. So they're first edition. I also need to remember to put the amount. So six means how many there are. So when I go to put them away, because I, I, I always forget that. I don't do it on the stamps, but I, I did do it on my dies and then I've kind of forgotten a few. Um, and then that one, there's like a hot air balloon. So it's like in the sky I think I need to sort that one out a little bit more but anyway I know what I mean <laughs> you get used to what you kind of do and use so now I've got bunting I've got children and babies so need see that I now is that's what I should have done for my stamps is children and babies I've got romantic love dies frames and tags I've got loads of frames and tags and I've also got inside here some old stamping up ones as well and then I've got under the sea because I've got a few there and then I've got Christmas. I have got a lot more Christmas ones to go in here. I haven't, that's what I'm in the middle of doing is sorting out all of those new, because I've been receiving a lot of product lately and I haven't got around to filing it away yet. So that's what I need to do. Then at the front here, I have my magnetic sheets. Now I was annoyed because the ones that I always order are the 
it's either 0.5 mil again I'll share the link so don't worry it's 0.5 mil thick was it 0.5 yeah 0.5 mil it is right and um, I always order them from the same company but the ones they sent me I look they're just they're so flimsy they're just no good whereas the ones that I use are here and this is in the proper little sleeve that I use now so this is if I bring this one out just fits in this one actually but that's the one with the little piece there and this is just so much thicker it doesn't flop about or anything like if I had these on this one they would start to I mean this this magnetic sheet doesn't flat you know it just it's it's the one you want basically <laughs> trying to describe a magnetic sheet so um yeah they sent me these and I started and I thought when I got them I thought they don't feel right and then I thought oh no me I've ordered the wrong ones clicked the wrong drop down or something and I checked and I thought no I definitely have so I contacted them they said they're going to send me them again so what I do is these all come as an A4 sheet like so and then I just cut it in half on my trimmer so I have the two sizes which fit perfectly in my pockets. So yeah, I mean, these can still be used. I won't not use them. They'd be good for just like plates. I'll probably swap them for some of my like topper dies. They work okay on these. So yeah, so it's just exactly the same way that I do my stamp organization. It's just, you add the magnetic sheet. You know, this isn't gonna work for everybody, we've all got different ways of doing things we've all got different space you know some people have heaps and heaps of space I've I'm okay I've got a you know a shelf dedicated for this but I still got to keep it contained and you know I can't keep adding no more tubs I'm pretty much there in terms of my tubs so I just kind of look back through things that I don't really use so much and then I can kind of you know donate those and I want to keep it within these kind of ones really so I will share all the links below I'll share the links for the labeler machine the laminator machine you know the pouches that I've purchased the laminating sheets everything everything you see today I will link below because that's what you've all been asking but I hope you can take something from this you know whether it be just the categories that I use you know that might be something that you might use in the folders that you've got or something so yeah hopefully it will help some of you um, let me know what you think let me know if you've got any suggestions as well and ways that you do things link them not link them sorry <laughs> you can comment below and I will um, you know be sure to check those out so thank you for watching Watching. please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more and I'll be back tomorrow with another tutorial thanks for watching bye